Oh, isn't that a lovely song? Strangers in the Night, recorded, of course, very famously by Frank Sinatra, but it was written, actually, by Burt Camphor. Um, a lot of people forget that, the Burt Camphor Orchestra. Hey, everybody, this is Tom here at Keyboard Skills Pro. Thanks for joining me today for a little... Um, informal music lesson and this is one for all you organ and keyboard players because on our organs and keyboards we love to play with these wonderful style accompaniments and in this lesson I thought we'd take a look at using the fill-in buttons effectively because a lot of people ask me they say you know I play my songs okay but I'm always looking for ways to enhance the piece and then some people say to me oh no I never press buttons oh no, no, no I can't I've got more than enough going on playing with my hands. I haven't got time to press buttons. But I'm going to give you some hints and tips in this little music lesson on effectively pressing these fill-in buttons, these break buttons, that will enhance your style backgrounds. Now, did you notice there when I was playing Strangers in the Night um, that I was pressing these buttons here on my keyboard? Now, these are these are called the fill-in buttons. And there's fill-in buttons on, on every organ, on Lowry's, on Verzi's, on Ringways, they're on Yamaha keyboards, Technics keyboards of yesteryear, excuse me, and the idea is is that they the drummer does a dum 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 dum, dum tss, they do a little fill in it fills in something in the music that has stopped and normally what happens is is if the singer is singing they come to a long note at the end of a section and they have to have a little breather just a few seconds just to give them a chance to breathe and get settled in for the next part of the song. And so what the orchestra does is it fills in with something so the audience doesn't get bored and it doesn't sound like that the singer has lost his or her way <laughs> with the lyrics. So have another listen to that again. We'll have an introduction. That was the fill-in. Very, quite subtle for a rumba. Have a listen to it. Here it was. It's going. Da, 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 da. Press. And at the end of the fill-in, there's normally a, a symbol, and that is the marker. Now, what the marker sound does, the symbol, it does two things. One, it tells you the fill-in's over, and it also tells all the musicians and the singer you need to start either going back into your accompaniment or singing the song in this case. Now, why did we press the fill-in there and not somewhere else? So let's look at the music. We've got strangers in the night, exchanging glances, wandering in the night. What were the chances we'd be sharing love before the night was through? Sorted, Phil. Family show this is. Thank you very much. <laughs> so. The singer, though, is very busy. Strangers in the night, da 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 So the idea of music is it has this sense of balance. If an instrument is doing something like a solo, playing a melody, a singer is singing, the rest of the orchestra is in the background. That's the idea of it being an accompaniment. So let's try pressing the fill-in somewhere in that opening section. Let's see what it sounds like. See what's going on there's kind of these da, 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 these little interruptions going underneath and it's almost disrupting the sound of the piece of music so that's the first tip you need to know where to press the fill-in button effectively musically and we do that by counting the bars now when we play the organ and the keyboard we of course play popular music and popular music has a kind of a standard song structure and the structure is the way that the bars and the sections of the song are laid out and composed so we need to look for a long note and a long note a four beat note or perhaps two four beat notes tied together normally indicates the end of a section so let's count up from the beginning look strangers in the night one 
exchanging glances, two, three, four, five, six, and then on the seventh and the eighth bar, the eighth bar is the clever bit, there is a very long note. So at the end of the eighth bar, we come to the end of the first section because that's where there's a long note in the melody. The singer needs a little break because he or she has been going da 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 So we need a little break there. And it's also at the end of an eight bar section. Now that's the key thing. Most standard popular songs of the last hundred years or so normally are written in eight bar blocks. So when I come to my fill in, where do I press it? Well, you press it at the beginning of the eighth bar because what the eighth bar does, it goes right, that's the end of that first bit, but we also then want to go into the next section. So listen to it this time with the fill-ins. Okay, five, bar six, bar seven, two, and fill, two, carry on. Hey, that sounded really good, didn't it? Now, did you notice there, when I pressed my buttons, and I've done this in a two minute tip, when you press your fill-in button, you press it in time with the music. Okay, so you go, da 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 da, bar seven, two, three, and press, and back. And that way, all your movements are musical. They're not just snatches and jumps disrupting your musical brain at that time. So the movements are done in um, in almost like counting the beats. Let's carry on to the next bit, look. Next section, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. There's a long note in bar eight. And so another eight bars will have gone by. So at the end of the eighth bar, we press the fill in, something like this. <laughs> Again, let's look at the next eight bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now in this case, we haven't got a long note, but again, we are still counting in eight bar blocks. Now, there are normally four sets of eight in a piece of music. So we have the first eight, fill in. The second eight, fill in. Third eight, fill in. And then at the end, if you're going around again, you use a fill in, or if you're at the end, you press the ending button. So, Virtually any song you can think of follows these kind of structures. So here's a little tune by Harold Arlen, uh, a jazz standard called Stormy Weather. Bar one, two, bar three, bar four, Almost feel look through bar six, we're going towards bar seven, bar eight, fill in two, three, carry on. There you go, it works, doesn't it? Here it comes. etc et so there's the tip so when you use the fill in you have to use it at the end of a section normally that's indicated by a long note four beats maybe three and a rest but there'll be a bar probably with one note in press the fill in button at the start of the eighth bar that way you'll get um, a nice fill in now of course the problem is sometimes when you play the eighth bar there might be a chord so if you have to play the chord on the first bit, just lift your hand and maybe catch it on the second or the third beat. You'll still hear a little fill in, something like this. Two, three, four, one, and press. 
because the filling is, is filling in the whole bar or it fills in the half of the bar that you want it to do. As long as you catch it somewhere in the bar, the filling will happen. So on you lovely Larry organ owners, you can use your touch bar or the kick switch. Versi owners, you can press the button, use the kick switch. Um, Yamaha, Clavinova and keyboard owners, you can use your fill-ins or a foot switch. There's all different ways of activating a fill-in. But as I say, it's normally at the end of a section and make sure you press your fill-ins effectively by doing them in time in with sync with the beats of the music. Now, I've written for your benefit, I hope, a little bonus lesson PDF that goes along with this tutorial. So if you'd like to get your hands on that for a bit more information, please do consider supporting my channel via patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro. When you sign up for Patreon, you get access to lots of bonus content. And if you sign up for silver level or above, you get access to bonus PDFs and lots of other things as well. So I hope you'll consider that, but in the meantime, have a lot of fun playing your music and effective filling in at the end of a phrase. Take care folks, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in another lesson very soon. Thanks a lot, bye bye.